sound is audible and my screen is visible right yes sir audible and visible sir. Hi everyone. Again, uh, this is Dr. Subham Vijayapure, and uh, uh, in last few lectures, uh, let me remind you, I am taking your medicine lectures, means veterinary medicine, and uh, from that one, first of all, we have come covered clinical medicine major part in uh, four lectures, and uh, later on, we have also covered the preventive medicine, which means. Uh, the diseases caused by these different type of microorganisms. Uh, in the next few lectures, we have covered that one also. So yesterday night only we have finished preventive medicine, and uh, now three uh, small parts which has which have remained. Uh, those are the pet medicine, wildlife medicine, and ethics and jurisprudence, animal welfare, and all laws acts. So now we are in the next half. So we have finished about 80% of the medicine course. So we are in the uh, like playoffs of this medicine. So first of all, among these three, we are starting with this pet medicine course. As the uh, meaning of medicine, you all know that medicine, uh, as it is a branch uh, of the science and it, it de deals with the treatment of diseases by means of using different uh, type of agents, natural, physical, and different, uh, so many. But what is the pet medicine? Actually, first of all, we have to uh, learn the meaning of pet. What exactly the pet is? Actually, the pet means companion animals, which are kept in our homes or offices as a, a companion for us. And uh, mainly in those, we used to keep dogs especially, uh, in some cases cats also and in few cases the birds also, okay, like the mena, like the quail, like the parrot, etc. So this uh, medicine now we have to study uh, this course of medicine which is associated with the pet animals, okay. And now we are uh, taking that part only. So hi. Uh, uh, without any delay, let's start this pet medicine. So, why pet animal or the pet bird? What is its importance? Actually, a pet animal is kept for companionship, as just I told you, and enjoyment or a household animal. Sometimes people keep them for the uh, security of home or offices also. Uh, here they are are kept for companionship or enjoyment or an or a household animal as opposed to livestock, laboratory animals, working animals or sports animals, okay, which are kept for the economic reasons. Now you are clear about the two different type of animals based on the purpose. What is the classification or what is the basis of classification? That is the purpose. So the next one is the economic purpose and in the economic purpose, the animals include are livestock means our cattle, buffalo, sheep, goat, then laboratory animals in order to do experiments over them, working animals in the farm animals and all, then sport animals also like the horse particularly. But here the, the pet or pet animal or pet bird which is kept for the enjoyment, simply just for enjoyment or the companionship. The most popular pets are noted for their loyal or playful characteristics for their attractive appearance and for their song means singing ability also not exactly singing but their peculiar voice like the mana and coil pets also uh, generally seem to provide their owners with non-trivial health benefits as uh, if the uh, owner of uh, if owner or any uh, person who, who is suffering from severe diseases or going through the depression and all, uh, having a pet nearby will definitely help help him or her from the uh, for the relief from those depressing uh, depressing diseases. Keeping pets has also been also been shown to help relieve stress to those who like having animals around. Okay, here stress relieving is one of the important role of uh, keeping this pet animal or pet bird. Walking a dog can provide both the owner and the dog exercise, 
fresh air and social interaction pet animals vary from okay here here um, you note uh, the what different type of pets could be generally in our mind pet means dog cat or birds came but now uh, what uh, exactly the animals used under this pet category those are the dog cat horse pig lovebirds pigeon fishes like aquas uh, pond uh, or what sorry aquarium uh, then amphibians even rodents also in this course much concentration we are giving on this dog cat and pet birds as they have they are being kept most uh, they are being kept mostly than the others okay dog cat and the pet birds now dog we'll start with this dog and uh, we'll start from a little bit history so uh, first of all we'll see what is its origin and uh, how this domestication of dog started the dog its uh, scientific name is canis familiaris it is the only member of canidae family that can be fully domesticated uh, the immediate wild ancestors ancestors of can canis familiaris has been the subject of much debate uh and linnaeus means one of the scientists who considered the dog to be a separate species and uh, distinguished between uh, distinguished from its different physical appearance and characteristics more recently a uh, few researches has been done uh, uh, by the expert mick dell mike dell and uh, he said that wolf and dog expert mick dell uh, mick dell fox he developed a missing link theory between these two wolf and dog then he believes that dog is descended from new extinct european dingo like dog means dog is descended from dog only it's not uh, although it is under this canidae family but it's descended from the dogs only then current behavior morphological and molecular biological evidence this supports that wolf is the primary ancestor of this dog this is the these are the different uh, uh, stories uh, everyone uh, uh, different opinions given by different scientists about the origin and the domestication of dog so here these sentences they can be contradictory or uh, controversial or to each other the important similarity between the wolf and dog okay here are the social nature method of communication facial expressions and vocalizations as you can see here in some sentences history is telling there is a similarity between these two but uh, in some cases some scientists they are telling that there is no history or so, uh, they are telling that there is no they don't uh, share the similar characteristics okay but the more researchers agree that the dog was fully domesticated and it can be selectively bred in the context of the forager society okay later on the earliest remains of domesticated dog that have been found are dated around 12000 to 14 years 14000 years ago even the 14000 years ago also people were uh, scientists suspect that people were domesticating domesticating this dog species at present the earliest finding of a domestic uh, dog consists of a mandible from a late paleothelic grave at over castle in germany and it is dated 14000 years before present or before christ okay and uh, sorry before present means uh, uh, almost 12000 years ago these 2000 and those 12000 means 14 years 2000 years earlier than the sites in western asia 14000 years in germany and uh, from where a cluster of canid means structure and some fo some fossils they have found don't uh, no need to remember this uh, all just for the origin uh, we have taken some history points here now uh, here the important part is actually dogs are divided classified according to their purpose so first of all sporting breed comes sporting group comes second the hound group and third one is the working breeds in the sporting group setters uh, pointers spaniels and retrievers comes in hound group a uh, spaniel means like cocker spaniel retriever means our two main types of retrievers like the labrador retriever and the golden retriever then the in hound group uh, even our uh, 
Indian dogs also come in this uh, hound group, like the Mudo hound is there. Then uh, what uh, other comes under this group are Basset, uh, Beagle, Black and Tan Coon, uh, tan coon Hound, Blood Hound, Dash Hunts, American and English Fox Hounds, Harrier, Norwegian Elk Hound, Otter Hound, Pitin Basset, Griffon Vandil, Afghan Hound, Basenji, Burzoi, and Greyhound. Then in working breeds, Samoyed, St. Bernard, Portuguese Water Dog, Newfoundland, Siberian Husky, Akita, Rottweiler, Boxer, Commodore, and Doberman. Actually, here you know uh, you are uh, like uh, applying. Your, you just if you apply a few logic, uh, some logic, then uh, in working means uh, definitely work has been carried out uh, by this particular type of dogs, especially here. Saint Bernard and Siberian Husky. They used to found in the uh, hilly areas. There, even dog carts are also av available and can be used to transport the humans from one animal to the another one. Can they can be used as a transport uh, uh, transport animal? Then, uh, Rottweiler, Boxer, and Doberman. They can be kept for this uh, as a watchdog and all. So they are also in this uh, category of working breeds. Now, in India, what different type of dogs are there? So, in India, first of all, Alsatian, which is commonly called as German Shepherd Dog, and uh, it is one of the very popular among the police as a police dog. Then, Beagle, Boxer, Bulldog, Collie, Dachshund, Dalmatian, Doberman, Great Den, Greyhound, Lassapso, Pointer, Pomeranian, Poodle, Pug. Labrador Retriever, Golden Retriever, Saint Bernard, Cocker Spaniel, Rottweiler, and uh, uh, again, sorry, this uh, German Shepherd came. Okay, so these type of about 20 more than 20 different type of dogs, they can be used for different purposes and they can be domesticated. They are being domesticated in India now. So we'll take here a few dogs, their characteristics. Commonly used dogs in India. Among these, we are we are taking two dogs about their purpose. If special characters, if any, we are taking the, uh, that thing also and with their pictures. Okay. So first of all, let's start with this German Shepherd and uh, commonly called as Alsatian. Most of us have seen this breed and can be used in uh, can be used in as a home uh, companion animal. Now, uh, the place of its origin is Germany. The name itself shows. German Shepherd. So, place of origin is a Germany as a part of a herding group. This is the one of utility. Then, German Shepherd. I will pronounce this as a GS in short so that uh, again and again, no need to take this long name. So, GS is a working dog developed originally for herding sheep because of their strength, intelligence, and abilities can be uh, in obedience training. They are employed as police dogs. Okay. Police dogs and war dogs around the world. So, GS can be used around the world in the uh, police force because of its intelligence, strength, and abilities. Then, this dog is the world's leading police car and even the military dog. And it has a double coated skin. Okay, skin is double coated and hair are smooth and glossy. Undercoat. Woolly, uh, uh, like wool, like protection is there and protects it from the cold. That's why it is called a double coated animal. Usually, the colors are gray or dark tan or various shades of sometimes even the black and white. So, in the three, four different shapes, uh, German Shepherd dog comes. Then, average height could be 60 to 70 centimeter. And uh, mm -hmm. if female is there, this 60 to 70 meter uh, sorry a centimeter is for the male and uh, for female uh, that could be little less so in female 55 to 60 centimeter body weight ranges from 25 to 35 kg ears are erect and smooth and well muscled strong and long neck then long hairy tail is there slightly curved at the end and uh, it can extend up to the paw so all these characteristics we can witness in this picture here this is the german shepherd dog now 
next is the bigger bigger you keep only one thing in your mind about whenever bigger comes that is the last point it is the dog of choice for the animal testing or as an experimental dog okay we'll take the other point points starting from the first one bigger is a breed of a small to medium size dog a member of the hound group it is similar in appearance to the fox hound dog <clears throat> then but it is a smaller uh, and with shorter legs and longer softer ears beagles are scent hounds developed primarily for tracking hare rabbit and other games they have a keen sense of smell and tracking instinct okay they have a keen sense of smell and tracking it is can be used in the tracking of for the suspicious object or person uh and this dog sees them employed means uh, particularly this detection devices and all so can be used as detection dogs for prohibited agriculture uh, imports and feed stuffs in quarantine around the world because they are the intelligent uh, they are popular as pets because of their size even temper and lack of inherited health problems are also there for this type of dog these characteristics also make them dog of choice for the animal testing means uh, intelligent has a keen sense of smell and tracking so different uh, uh, capabilities are there and this makes the dog uh, this makes the beagle dog of choice for animal testing this is the beagle dog now the next one is the boxer the origin is also germany and a medium size this is a medium size sturdy dog with broad head short nose and strong jaws muscular body and uh, covered with the again coat of it could be red fawn or brindle and tail placed high and dog living behind 4 to 5 cm stump height is 60 cm and uh, around 45 to 60 cm and body weight could be could range from 25 to 30 kg here also uh, the in the like in the other animals males uh, male dogs are slightly heavier than the female these are the boxer dogs boxer uh, breed of dogs then the next one is the doberman okay the full name is the doberman pinscher origin is from the germany and uh, an alert dog has smooth means an alert doberman dog has smooth compact and muscular body body coat is smooth short thick and glossy and uh, color could be black brown or blue not blue not exactly blue blue shaded with the other colors extremities they are light in color ears are small and erect but these erects are dropped slightly forward tail is dog in early life living around 2 to 3 cm stump of this tail this is the doberman dog here you can see tail is dog without uh, tail and this tail is just with the with its stump now the next one is the great dane again g for great dane g for germany this is again large sized muscular and small, strong animal and uh, coat is short dense and soft color could be black fawn pure white uh, with black or blue patches ears are small and uh, ears with falling tip uh, then face is long and narrow average height is 75 and weight is 55 kg tail is thick at the root and tapering to the termination below the hock joint and this is the great den dog very heighted muscular and strong now the next one is the pomeranian pomeranian why pomeranian uh, actually origin is poland but the exact origin is the pomerania region in central europe means uh, this part is now uh, today it is a part of eastern germany and northern poland okay pomerania so uh, but whenever it if its origin if it asked then right the poland only okay not central europe and all pomerania region okay previously it was belonging in the poland so uh, you can opt the choice poland now pomeranian this is a toy breed and it's a very active outer coat is long straight coarse and thicker around the neck but the under coat is soft and woolly only whole color free from admixture if accepted okay 
only one type of color is there in this type of dogs the most common colors are the, it could be orange or black or creamy or white or or like tan tan color then ears are here the ears of this animal are small and erect tail is a hairy and carried on the uh, back okay tail can it can carry on the back here here you can notice this is the tail and tail can carry on the back this is the pomeranian dog breed now the next one is the pug pug commonly called as voda kunta chota kutta so origin is china from china it is a small breed short back and rounded ribs coat is a short soft fine smooth and very attractive this is one this one is a very attractive ears of this dog are rose or button shaped height is 25 to 30 cm and body weight is they are not very heavier or muscular so their body weight ranges from 6 to 8 kg only tail is tightly curved or sometimes even double curved so this is the pug breed pug breed of dog it looks very uh, attractive then the next one is the labrador even labrador dogs are also very attractive and uh, the common name uh, and uh, this labrador dog is one of the maximum or uh, utilized uh, home dog in india and uh, complete name is labrador retriever origin is from the new found land and they have wove webbed paws for swimming also useful when they retrieve their prey that's why ret to retrieve that's why the name came from that verb retriever okay and there are when something has been thrown they they will retrieve it back to us okay so there are two types of this retriever mainly uh, that can be domesticated that are uh, domesticated as a companion animal in home home first one is a labrador retriever and the next one is the golden retriever so the next one this is a active dog and strong body coat is short dense smooth and glossy color is black chocolate or yellow or free from markings ears are large and hanging close to head height is about 60 cm body weight body weight is about 25 to 35 kg tail is thick at the root and tapering towards the tip here 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 this is the labrador retriever this is the golden retriever again we are taking this uh, golden retriever here this golden retriever is origin is scotland and uh, this is also same in the in the way of labradors this is also very active and powerful animal coat is flat or wavy and dense with water resistant undercoat it's a water resistant under undercoat color uh, yes here here this is the important point that fourth one color any shade of gold or cream but not red or tan any shade of gold that's why they are called golden and retriever you know the purpose to retrieve so it is retriever ears moderate in size and height is about 50 to 60 cm and body weight is about 30 to 35 kg tail is long straight and feathered here uh, very sweet looking this is this is the golden retriever dog now the next one is the saint bernard utility dog uh, like the siberian husky very heavy and muscular origin is the switzerland this is one of the very heaviest dogs with a massive and broad forehead straight back deep chest and heavy legs coat is either short head or it could be long head thighs and tail they are well feathered they are very just <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry uh, saint bernard origin is switzerland this is one of the very heaviest breed and uh, their coat could be short haired or even long haired thighs and tail they are very well feathered uh, in case of long haired dogs height uh, height is here you can notice uh, height uh, it's also maximum and the weight is also maximum uh, height is about 675 cm and body weight could be from say, starting from 75 kg and max maximum it could be even 90 kg so you can imagine how strong and how well built these dogs could be occasionally uh, they could be even 90 to 100 kg in some specimens our tail set is uh, high long and slightly curved and that always carries low like tail is high long but it is it carries low not like the pomeranian uh, 
uh, it carries through on the back. So uh, here in the Saint Bernard, tail carried in a low direction. Here, this is the Saint Bernard top, very muscular, uh, particularly living in the old hilly areas and uh, very strong and well built, uh, heavy dog breed. Then the next one is the Rottweiler. Rottweiler, or can be called as butcher's dog. This is the medium to large size Stalwart dog. Uh, this spirit is originating in Germany also, and uh, the purpose is herding. Previously, it is used as a herding dog. This is a very hardy and a very intelligent also. They worked as a draught dogs or even pulling carts to carry livestock to uh, slaughter or meat and other products for the market. Now, uh, you know the purpose draught dogs or to pulling carts, draught wheelers are used. Coat consists of top coat and under coat. Top coat is medium uh, of medium length, length and under coat uh, must not show through the top coat. So top coat is at uh, upper side and lower under coat is uh, at lower side. Here is a little longer on the hind legs, hind, hind legs only. Uh, forget to put this uh, rod wheeler picture, but uh, no problem. We all must have seen this one. Now Indian breeds of dog. Okay. Here, a large variety of domesticated and semi-domesticated dogs are found in different parts of India. These are not very attractive as like the other uh, breeds of dogs and uh, uh, they can be used for the race purpose particularly and uh, here such type of dogs can be kept as pets in urban and mostly in rural areas but only sporadic atoms have been made for the identification, maintenance, breeding and utility of local dogs. In breed in many parts of India, uh, one can see dogs having similar characteristics. Okay, So uh, distinguishing uh, among them is a very difficult, uh, difficult task as most of the dogs, they share similar characteristics. So first of all, here uh, we are now in the uh, Indian dog breed chapter. So, starting with the first dog, that is the Raj Palayam. This breed is a native from the Raj Palayam in Tamil Nadu. This place is place. Uh, this place is there in the Tamil Nadu state, India, which was uh, means Raj Palayam was developed in a hunt uh, in a hunting dog in Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. Also, it is a hound and therefore should be kept in optimum working conditions. Okay. Then the characteristics are body coat is short but dense, most prized color. Mostly it is a milky white uh, with a pink nose and golden eyes. Milky white with pink nose and golden eyes. Other colors including spotted, black, brown, anything uh, in uh, the uh, this rash palam can occur in these three four forms, but mostly uh, the three four colors, but mostly the prized uh, and the uh, special. A uh, typical Rajpalayam breed is of white, means milky white color. An extremely handsome and graceful dog this Rajpalayam is and has a gait similar to the trotting of thoroughbred horse. Means horse trot or the gait of this dog, it looks same. Height would be six, means uh, it height could be 40 to 50 centimeter and uh, in the other way, uh, uh, like in the other dogs, here also the male dogs are heavier than the females. This is the Raj Palayam dog breed. Milky white is the precious one. Then the next one is the Gaddi. This one also very heavy and muscular. And uh, this has been thought to be uh, developed by the Asur King Mahidan of Mirat. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> by crossing the wild dingo like hounds. By crossing these wild dingo like hounds, uh, this Gaddi dog has been developed. It was thought to be developed by Asur King Mahidan of Mirat. Body coat is short, close, and rough with long hair on thighs and terminal part of tail. Body coat may grow longer in winter also. Coat color usually dull white with lighter color on the belly. Height of this dog could be 50 to 60, 70 centimeter. Body weight. Uh, could be from 25 to 50 kg. Here also males are heavier, tail is hairy and it can extend up to fork. Ears are small and curved. So this is the Gaddi dogs. Very 
पेरी हेरी डॉक्टर इज गड्डी गद्दी देन द नेक्स्ट वन इज द रामपुर हाउट रामपुर दिस प्लेस बिलोंग फ्रॉम द यूपी इट इज प्रेजेंट इन द यूपी नॉर्दर्न इंडिया मीन स्पेशली इट इज यूपी बिटवीन दिल्ली एंड बरेली देर इज अ प्लेस दैट इज द रामपुर ओके वेन एवर सम वन इफ ट्रेवलिंग फ्रॉम डेली Uh, to Bareilly, then this round court place comes, provided the condition is he or she should travel with bus only. Let then only round court comes. Thin, slender dog of bony appearance. Then coat is a short, close and rough of fawn to brown color. Ears are small and half curved. Chest is a broad. Waist is narrow with raised cow. Height is sixty centimeter. Body weight is oh, sorry, body weight is about forty kg. Same here. Males are heavier. Tail is long, straight, and tapering. You need not to remember everything. Just that Rampur place. Now uh, that origin is in the northern India. About this Rampur hound, you keep that single point in mind only. That is sufficient. This is the Rampur hound dog breed. Then the next one is the Mudal hound. Here also, uh, this hound is also known as Caravan hound. and the feathered variety it is commonly called commonly referred as a pashmi also and uh, especially in the village in the villages villages this dog is uh, known as karwani also means uh, mudal hound or karwan hound or pashmi or karwani this many names are there for this mudal hound dog breed it is a common companion animal and uh, among the village folk in india's deccan plateau means in the uh this hyderabad and all uh, at adjoining area purpose is used for hun hunting and guarding and now the physical appearance characteristics abdomen is tucked in hind quarters are wide and well muscled tail is strong at the base but not too long uh it is set low and carried on the natural curve then there are two coat varieties one is one with entirely smooth and the other one with silky featherings on the ears legs and tail all colors and combinations of colors are acceptable means many color this mudal hound comes in the many colors and color combinations this is the mudal hound particularly of this white color now the next dog is the chippy parai chippy parai little bit difficult to pronounce uh, why because this is thought to be descendant of saluki dog breed and today it is found in the area around the periyar lake uh, it is used primary I, even i don't know where this periyar lake is i will find on this google map and i will let you know uh, yesterday's question saben filmantes it is used for the uh, diagnosis of toxoplasma only then uh, it is used primarily for hunting wild boar means chippy parai used for hunting wild boar deer and hare and uh, said to be an hare means it is a uh, type it is an it is a mammal like uh, uh, it is an animal like uh, rabbit okay share some characteristics of rabbit that is called a hare and spelling is h a r e it's not hare hare it is hare it is this dog it's said to be an excellent hunter and used for guarding the home also it has a short coat that's very close on the whole the coat if kept groomed has a shine on shining and shell like appearance is there then this kind of coat makes it ideal for the hot climates also as short coat is there so not more uh, it, uh, this uh, in case of high temperature uh, there will be more uh, sweating and all that's why Uh, this dog is with the short coat, and uh, this peculiar characteristic make it ideal or suitable under the different under the hot climates. This hound is also less prone to ticks and flies, and uh, their short cover provides the easy detection. Here also one more advantage of short coat, uh, as if it gets infested with ticks or flies, it can be easily identified by the owner because of its short. Coat. This is the chippy parai dog breed. Now, we are uh, particularly in the female uh, about this reproductive cycle. Uh, we are taking few important uh, uh, 
points here are not just about reproductive cycle but overall different parameters of dogs we are taking here as uh, the uh, title is breeding guide to bitch okay which is the female dog and uh, spelling is the b i t c h so here the age of puberty is about 6 to 12 months but the age of breeding is 12 to 18 months this is the type of uh, monoestrous animal means uh, frequently like polyestrous animals like cow or buffalo frequently their estrus come this cycle repeats after regular 21 day cycle so it's not like that in uh, hardly in dogs estrus cycle comes twice in a year then length of estrus cycle it could be about 6 months and uh, length of that heat period is about 6 to 13 days first one is the estrus cycle means it involving all the phases of estrus and the estrus uh, period means it is of 6 to 13 days the um, uh, this period is very long because the cycle is also long gestation period it could be it could range from 55 to 75 days but uh, on an average 63 63 days are there time of ovulation is 40 to 60 Hours after the receptive phase, and the proper time for AI or mating is two to three days after the onset of two true estrus. So, breeding season is a bi biennial, means uh, either in the August or September, or either in the February to March. Then, return of heat after parturition, uh, after parturition once parturition happened, then within next four to five months, means sixteen to twenty weeks. again that bitch will come to heat the recurrence of non uh, recurrence after non conception twice early again age of weaning is 4 to 6 weeks means separating of pups from the mother time of fertilized ova entering uter uterus is 5 to 6 days post coitus time of implantation will be 15 days post coitus then time of placenta is endothelial corial expulsion of placenta placent as these are uh, polytoc sorry uh, many fetuses uh, are there inside it's not like monotrophous polytocous animal disease so expulsion of placenta is there with every fetus exp uh, placenta will come so this expulsion is immediately after each fetus now average number of pups born to every female dog they are they could be from 4 to 8 Birth weight is sixty five. Minimum it could be from sixty five gram or maximum it could be uh, to five hundred gram of pups. Then breeding span is about seven to eight years and life span is ten to fifteen years on an average. But there is a record that the dog, one dog, has survived about thirty two years. But average. on an average they can live provided they are healthy and not suffering from any disease then they live for 10 to 15 years now here in dog milk what uh, different things are present in dog's milk protein is present uh, everything is mentioned uh, oh, sorry first three things are mentioned in percentage and later on it has been mentioned milligram per liter or kilocalorie per liter so here protein is 8 to 10% lactose 3 to 4% fat 11 to 14% calcium is about 2000 mg per liter of uh, milk then magnesium 9 to 100 iron 2 to 7 mg per liter zinc and copper uh, zinc is 4 and copper 1 to 1.5 energy is about 1500 to 1800 kilocalorie per liter of milk now some kennel club and dog shows we will talk here about a little bit kennel means it's a uh, group or it's a uh, like many dogs kept together then it's called like kennel okay now kennel dogs and dog shows why <clears throat> this chapter will uh, discuss about what is pedigree and how pedigree starts are being maintained and what is kennel club its role how to prepare a dog for show and uh, what we all uh, what are all the different types of dog shows okay first of all pedigree and pedigree chart here we are seeing pedigree chart then kennel club just a little bit information we are taking here pedigree 
it's a diagram of family tree showing the relationship between individuals we all know what the what exactly the pedigree is the another one that is the food and uh, it's a company name pedigree okay uh, and first of all that company has started this different type of dog foods so that's the one of the renowned company let not many tools and all they are in market now so pedigree uh, it can show uh, uh, and it can allow estimation of gene penetrance and penetrance and gene expressions from the pedigree chart from the family tree we can we are able to know the characteristic impression in the dogs pedigree chart is a family tree typically used for the animals and uh, it is helpful for watching the certain traits dogs are kept, being kept for different <clears throat> purposes okay uh, and one if someone is purchasing a dog then having a knowledge about pedigree chart about its pedigree is utmost important at most uh, it's of utmost importance okay pedigree chart shows the parents and its offspring offsprings also along with their gender and along with the special characteristics so this is the information about the pedigree now pedigree chart only takes a few minutes to learn and uh, a dog pedigree chart would track his breed and the breed of his ancestors so just to track his different uh, just to track these different character states and their purity or their gene impression <coughs> pedigree used <coughs> what other uses are there for this ancestral lineage <coughs> breeding lines also for the horses uh, can be used in horses also descendants of what uh, type of dogs and purity can be analyzed to track the ancestry of animals and assist in the planning of suitable breeding programs to enhance the desired traits to permit entry into the clubs society or results in higher breeding in kennel club okay so for this different uh, uses uh, this pedigree chart is used and a kennel club also known as kennel council or canine council in some countries in our country uh, in india it is called kennel club in some country it is called kennel council or canine council <clears throat> so kennel club is an organization for canine affairs that concern itself with the breeding showing and promotion of more than one breed of dog okay then uh, it maintains the breed standard also it maintains record also it records the pedigrees this is the function of kennel club we are saying we are talking about here A pedigree it has uh, it, we have finished it what is pedigree what it uses now we are talking in short about this kennel club what kennel club does it maintains the breed standard it record the pedigrees and issue the rules for confirmation dog confirmation of dog shows next upcoming shows trials or accreditation of judges okay they often serve as registries uh, in order to register particular uh, dog which are lists of adult pure purebred dogs and list for litters of puppies born to purebred parents also this kennel club also manages all these aspects of dog breeds to represent a particular dog either directly or through its member bodies established kennel clubs in india are at four different places hyderabad kotak mund mysore and kolkata these clubs follow the procedure followed in the kennel club in the united kingdom means like as in the europe uh, kennel council they works in the same way we our kennel club also work uh, the kennel club of india this is a very leading authority authority especially for the registration of pure bred and cross bred dogs okay and it maintains this registry in uh, it issues pedigrees for pure bred and litters pedigree means not food pedigree means the uh, this pedigree chart okay uh, it also hosts the uh, shows across the country and awards the companionship to various breeds of dogs also the most common registered breeds with the kennel club are uh, kci i means kennel club of india are labrador retrievers golden retriever german shepherd dachshunds dalmatian uh, doberman and pugs these are one of the mostly registered breeds by this kci 
and pedigree certificates they can be also issued by the kennel club of india now uh, if you want if you want to like prepare for this talks for shows different type of shows so or how to uh what some prerequisites are there uh a preparation of dog for the show requires considerable expert ex definitely experience and expertise is required and uh, trimming is there required and uh, should kept in good and uh, clean good uh, that particular dog must be in a good health uh <coughs> Ideal condition for particular breed is best understood by observing the winning exhibits of various dog shows. Okay, then generally dog shows uh, should have a dog shown. Generally, dog should have a little fat in keeping with the correct skills provided with that particular breed. Uh, in certain breed, it is better for a dog to wear a light coat. Okay, light coat, uh, and during the period between the final bath. Uh, bath is there. Uh, after bath, uh, it should wear a light coat and show to prevent it from become, becoming dirty again. Okay. That's why it is show. Okay. Uh, in show, it take care so that that particular dog should not become dirty again. The breeds where hard coat is not unnecessary. Okay. Animals, whatever are there, they should be in a soft coat, uh, in single coat. All white coated dogs should have a dry cleaner also. They can get dirty easily. Well rubbed into their coats uh, on the morning of the show. This is the steps used for the preparation for the dogs for these shows. Okay. Now uh, the next one is the vaccination and deworming. Uh, we are taking one by one uh, important character points of these dogs. What different type of uh, things involved in the life of dog in the life of uh, uh, owner of dogs so uh, dogs actually uh, important one of the important uh, part of dogs is the vaccination definitely and deworming okay why because they are highly prone for different type of infections uh, and very peculiarly special breeds are susceptible now we have taken everything in preventive medicine canine distemper or uh, ivermectin toxicity in police or uh, this uh, uh, in greyhounds, cardiac hypertrophy happens because of these barbiturates. In pharmacology, also we have taken some contraindications in, that, uh, in Dalmatians, urate crystal pumps. So, according to breeds, many uh, various type of disease can happen. So, all need deworming and vaccinations. Otherwise, they will be susceptible for uh, these viral and bacterial diseases. The vaccination of pups, also the annual booster vaccination in adults, prevent them from becoming the dangerous infectious diseases, uh, from developing the dangerous infectious diseases. Then here uh, we'll take this uh, short, in short, the deworming and uh, vaccination program. So first of all, we'll take this deworming. Here you uh, focus on this arrow. Every two weeks from birth to the three months old, from birth to three, three months, every two weeks, dogs should be uh, dewormed. Then, after every month, from three months to six months. First of all, birth to three months is every two weeks. Next, three to six months is every one month. Next, six months to the onwards, every three months once. Okay, this is the simple deworming method in dog. No need to uh, no need to go in any go in any complex formulas. Just it's a very simple from birth to three months old every two weeks from three to six months every month from three to uh, from you know, six months to again uh, in uh, this, after six months every three months deworming should be done but pregnant bitches should be dewormed two weeks before health okay pregnant bitches they should be dewormed uh, two weeks be minimum two weeks before helping. Sorry, maximum two weeks before whelping, no after that one. So, what different type of dewormers can be used? Few are here, like the drawn tail or open tail, pirant tail, moran tail, milbamax, canex, and over. These different type of dewormers are there in market. Even we also know, like easy pattern, all these dewormers can come, warm stock can come in many trade names. So the content could be tragic. Important one is the tragic until pyrantel and morantel. Now, once deworming has happened, now what different type of vaccinations we can do there? So these first two, 
parovirus or coronavirus then can and distember adenovirus leptospira uh, or leptospira uh, or para influenza so this every the all combined uh, virus uh, vaccine comes like and it is commonly called the 5 in 1 7 in 1 even 9 in 1 also comes particularly it involves parovirus para influenza virus leptospirosis uh, distember virus and hepatitis virus okay adenovirus okay uh, and leptospira also so accordingly accordingly uh, after uh, 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 accordingly, the uh, based on the number of viruses, uh, they are named as five in one, seven in one, and uh, trade names are like the Megavac, uh, one of the one of the major vaccines of this Indian immunological companies. And uh, first of first vaccination here, here yeah, the age at first vaccination is at eight weeks of age. Okay, in both here it has been mentioned separately, but we used to take single shot at eight weeks of age, six to eight weeks of age to be more specific. And uh, second here, this second means it's a booster. Booster is after one month of the first one, means just exactly after four weeks. Okay. Here, if we have taken the uh, taken vaccination at eight weeks, later on, we have to take its booster on the 12 weeks. Simply, we can even uh, remember that uh, First vaccination, uh, it has been taken on fifth for second month. Then its booster we can take on third month. Then one important another vaccine is the anti rabies vaccine, and that can be given separately. Their first dose here, their first dose means this anti rabies vaccine first dose is at twelve weeks of age, means at th three month of age, and after this primary dose. Just after one month, its booster can be given. So this simple method is there for the deworming and vaccination of dogs. Now, now the cat. Okay, in cat, this chapter we have finished. Uh, we have taken a brief information, brief history of dogs, their origin, their domestication. What different type of dogs are there? Uh, we have classified them according to their purpose. Then we have taken what different type of uh, dogs are domesticated in India. Uh, then accordingly, some dogs, their characteristic features uh, with pictures we have taken. Later on, we shifted to the preparation of dogs for shows, then pedigrees, kennel clubs, and also now just, just now we have covered its deworming and vaccination. Okay, now the next paid animal is the cat. And uh, here also we'll uh, learn few important characteristics of dogs, not, uh, sorry, cats, not uh, uh, exactly in the way of dogs, but we'll choose here, uh, we'll be more specific in this case of cat. Taxonomy, habitat, beware of domestic cat, then how to choose cat, handling, identification, these different uh, things are there. But we'll take few among this, first of all, uh, history. As in, like cats, uh, sorry, as like dogs, in dogs, Canis familiaris, familiaris was its scientific name. And here for cat, cat felis cactus is its uh, oh, sorry, scientific name. And it is also known as the domestic cat or also called as house cat. And uh, it is distinguished from the other felines. Felines means wild cats. Okay, in wild, feline means wild cats. Okay, uh, so uh, this cat has been distinguished from the wild cats by the by its small size, and uh, cat is valued. House cat is valued by the humans for its companionship. Okay. <clears throat> so, this cat is also called as domestic cat or house cat. Its scientific name is Felis catus, and uh, it has been distinguished from the other felines like the wild cat, uh, uh, cats by this by its small size, and it has been valued by humans, and it is used as a companion uh, animal for the humans. Now, cats also. 
हेलो हेलो now uh, as in the dogs uh, they have been domesticated 14000 years ago in the same way cats have been associated with humans at least for 9005 from the 9500 years ago and currently the this is one of the most popular pet in the world okay don't get confused most people uh, uh, just in in india it's not the case like in india dogs they have they Uh, are being uh, pet as a they are being kept as a pet uh, animal in the India mostly, but uh, in the world if we consider a global scenario, then cats are the most popular pet animals in the world. Why? Uh, because it's a skilled predator and a cat hunts over one thousand different type of small species for food. Can't imagine even they can hunt for even one thousand species of what wood. Uh, mostly we have seen it chasing the uh, this rodent species. Okay, but they can hunt over one thousand one thousand different species of wood using its excellent eyesight and hearing capacity. Okay, for cats, uh, they have very excellent eyesight and hearing capacity. Despite being solitary hunters, cats are the social species also and uh, use a variety of vocalizations, then pheromones and uh, and types of body language for communication. Like uh, these include and uh, they are named like this, like mewing, 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 uh, mewing, what, <laughs> purring, trailing. hissing growling and grunting okay cats have a so unique variety of social vocalization means ability to produce sound also they can produce pheromones and uh, it has a typical body language for the communication and these include mewing purring three trailing hissing growling and grunting <coughs> these are also bred and shown as registered pedigree pets as in the way of dogs and keeping the cats as a companion animal this hobby is called cat fancy okay cat fancy here we'll take some brief information and uh, types of cats although they are not so uh, important from our exam point of view as dogs are most important but taxonomy if we before that one uh, okay sorry taxonomy if we take the dog of domestic cats then their phylum is animalia and class is mammalia okay order is carnivorous family is felidae genus is felis species is cactus felis cactus is used particularly for this domestic cats okay phylum animalia class mammalia order carnivore family felidae genus felis species cats in domestic cats and some of its wild relatives are there uh, so now accordingly we will take some uh, types domestic cat its scientific name is called felis cats and this is a worldwide in distribution then african wild cat it is called uh, felis silvestris labica labica present mainly in the africa then indian desert cat called felis silvestris ornate mainly present in southwest asia and northern india jungle cat it is called felis cat felis caws caws or caws and uh, also present in egypt to india region then sand cat called felis margarita present from sahara to turkestan turkey to this uh, turkestan then uh, european wild cat which is called felis silvestris silvestris and present in scotland to south east asia okay you can see in this in the pictures uh, starting from the upper left corner indian desert cat domestic cat jungle cat african wild cat sand cat and european wild cat although they look 
a bit similar but uh, there is uh, biologically they up, they are very apart from each other now uh, as in the dogs in which we have taken in the same way here in the cats their stage at sexual maturity this is important from the exam point of view they can ask their age of sexual maturity gestation period or weaning age so keep in mind that weaning mating weight uh, sorry age at sexual maturity is 8 to 9 months uh, mating weight uh, about 2500 means 2.5 kg then estrus cycle ranges from 14 to 21 days and uh, estrus estrus means estrus period estrus cycle is 14 to 21 days but estrus period is 3 to estrus period will last for 3 to 6 days gestation period uh, is of 63 days same as in the case of uh, as same like the dogs same like the bitches litter size is 3 to 6 in dogs it was 4 to 8 winning age is 5 to 6 weeks same like dogs okay age of my sexual maturity 9 months mating weight 2.5 kg Estrus cycle 21 days. Estrus duration 6 days. Gestation 63 days. Litter size from 3 to 6 and winning age at 5 to 6 weeks. At 5 to 6 weeks, kittens get separated from their mother. Okay. The next figure is indicative uh, of the gross anatomy of the cats. Okay. Here you can notice different uh, vital organs. Uh, starting from the brain then spinal cord then diaphragm uh, then liver mm, how this diaphragm can separate this thoracic and abdominal cavity you can notice here then liver is there stomach is there uh, then kidneys also there large intestine small intestine anus testes in case of males urethra bladder spleen then gall bladder heart lung esophagus trachea buccal cavity and nasal cavity now handling and identification how to handle this cat first of all hold the loose skin at the back of the neck with one hand and hold him with the other while you have to talk to him okay first of all you have to keep your hand on the back side of uh, the cat and uh, back side of the neck with one hand and hold him with the other uh, hand also and talk to him in between if it is necessary to pick up a cat with one hand only place your open hand right under its chest okay right under its chest and make sure you can lift it comfortably comfortably without clutching so that it feels safe okay you have to keep your hand like this or uh, curl your fingers in this way and lift it up okay identification cats are usually identified by the color and pattern of their fur or uh, they and they can be housed singly or in the cages expanding collars may also used but these must be adjusted at as the kitten grows and the must show proof okay then danger of using non expanding collars is that they be, may become caught in loose fittings and consequently they injure the cats then this is the typical handling of this cat by the one hand we have to this danger this danger means if we are not trained to handle the cat then it won't our handling will become difficult it won't be uh, easy uh, and uh, that cat may bite to the handling person so uh, this is a skill and has to be handled very carefully so that this cat you should feel safe we have to hold our one hand uh, and uh, keep it on the back side of neck and hold uh, place your uh, another hand at the other area of body on the other area of body okay and even if we have to lift it up then uh, have to keep one hand entirely and have to curl the uh, fingers so that they can go on the ventral region of cats and without clutching we just have to simply lift it up now grooming and exercise cat needs sufficient exercise uh, especially when they are confined in any house and uh, or they should provided with playthings like crushed paper pieces balls means if they 
or house na, uh, if they can find it house then definitely exercise is very necessary then, then the best thing is to keep the two cats together then so that they can talk to each other uh, sorry uh, they can play with each other and exercise may happen of both these dogs or uh, both these cats to so they clean the body by wa- washing with the tongue however grooming will save the furniture from the cat hair okay if we groom it then ca- as cats uh, hairs they keep on falling so uh, if we keep on grooming then it will save the furniture from the cat hairs otherwise this hairs will be uh, uh, will spread everywhere uh, in the home cats up to 1 year of age have coat shedding and mounting uh, this mounting uh, habit okay that's why grooming is necessary so mounting should not be mistaken as a disease it's a common and normal finding but under 1 year age of cats so it must not be uh, taken mistaken as a disease like uh, uh, vitamin a deficiency or uh, external ectoparasitis infest ectoparasite infestation not not necessarily mounting means it uh, mounting of hairs means that animal is suffering from a disease not necessarily even under natural conditions normally they will shed their hairs under one if uh, until they become of one year age for short hair type cats grooming is not necessary and uh, for long hair type it is required twice daily for this purpose for grooming wide tooth metal comb or nylon brushes we can use grooming is also way of communication for our affection so that we can talk to cats in between now purpose of grooming okay a sleek and glossy hair coat is an identification so grooming will prove will yield that uh, glossy hair coat if regular grooming uh, if we do then all cats they benefit from the grooming because uh, they will uh, particularly this long hair breeds they shed more hair so they require more attention even two to three times a day we can uh, we have to groom cats fur usually sheds in spring and fall although some shedding may constantly occur grooming removes old dead hairs and lessens the risk of hair walls also hair walls means formation of this hairs uh, as a wall like and uh, they it, that can be ingested or uh, oh, sorry after ingestion that walls like uh, this uh, growth will happen inside this uh, inside the stomach so removing uh, so uh, regular grooming it will remove old hairs and uh, lessen the risk of this hair wall formation then regular grooming will also give the opportunity to check the parasites or uh, any skin disorder or and also eye or ear problems removal of these tangles and mats may be difficult and an unpleasant experience of this uh, cat so grooming will remove that one now housing they share the house of owners only no need to provide special but uh, we can use special uh, facilities like the litter box or toilet tray even i don't know what this thing is exactly uh, but uh, such new things are now in the market for the housing of cats uh, like the litter box or feeding and drinking bowl separately can be used warm bed can be people can use separately collar for harness then traveling basket can also be used for these cats tray should be placed in the same spot always to avoid the confusion okay then initially the cat should be taken to the tray regularly after feeding and first wake up after sleeping okay then after the initial period of settling the tray can be removed and kitten can be trained to use the garden first of all uh, uh, this toilet tray means it's a special tray for this uh, for the defecation and initial period tray can be used and later on it can be removed and uh, they are trained to use the garners for that purpose now training the amount of training and exercise of cat needs it varies from breed to breed and uh, uh, a cat living in a city apartments definitely they are confined in house so need exercise <clears throat> apartment cats need to be furnished with toys cardboard tubes or other play equipments to provide them enough amount of exercise owners of variable pure breed and 
show uh, or cat or show cats may not want their animals to run free where they risk in, injury loss or unwanted litter so exercise uh, here exercise is very important uh, uh, it plays very important role outdoor cats they get plenty of exercise because they move from one place to another place continuously so they get uh, enough amount of exercise however they run at a greater risk from injury from flights they will uh, jump here and there so there is also chance of uh, ex- uh, sorry uh, there is also chance of injury uh, and sometimes even death or uh, injury on the roadways also may happen by this different uh, vehicles and all and uh, they can also come in contact of not just other cats but the in contact with the other animals and uh, they can carry disease or they are at risk of development of disease especially the parasitic disease cat living inside the uh, indoors they have a, a very opposite opposite thing of the uh, opposite of this outdoor cats and uh, who living in the indoors they have a clean litter box and plenty of water owner should be aware of plants also because some plants their ingestion for uh, they contain toxic substances and uh, that toxicity may happen to plants and uh, it's a danger that's why owner should be aware of this poisonous plants then the next thing is signs of parturition in cats when they are at parturition uh, stage when they have completed their 63 to 65 days gestation period then female uh, will show uh, these signs from 1 to 2 days before means signs will start from 61 61 days only at the final week mammary glands will enlarge milk can be spilled at least 1 to 2 days automatically one reliable mean is body temperature of the queen queen is the female dog sorry female cat as bitch is the female dog so here queen is the female cat even i i am taking this cat so specific features but again and again uh, dog is coming because uh, mostly we uh, keep the dogs and even studying uh, while studying different type of diseases uh, will study it uh, the diseases of dogs also very less uh, frequently we use uh, this cat word in our studies that's why again and again while pronouncing cat uh, this dog coming in my mouth but uh, forgive me queen is the uh, female of cat uh, and the one reliable sign of this uh, parturition means here this females uh, or body temperature it will falls down 12, 12 to 36 hours before parturition okay rectal parturition uh, rectal temperature usually falls from 101 to 98 or 101 to 100 degree fahrenheit when 12 to 36 hours before parturition average time between initiation of strong uterine contractions of second stage labor to birth of kitten it is it just required 10 to 13 minutes but total litter in order to in order for the in order uh, to uh, parturate all the litters it will it may take from 2 to 6 hours minimum 2 hours and maximum 6 hours sometimes the female may take rest and uh, will not show signs of labor or pain up to 2 hours between kittens but active straining and signs of hard level of more than 30 to 60 minutes it is a sign of the dystrophia in queen now okay let's assume that queen has parturated uh, safely now how to take care of newborn kitten mother means queen it provides most of the uh, care to the newborn kitten at at birth kitten are relatively immature okay their eyelids they are not uh, they won't open immediately and not able to see when picked up healthy newborn kitten should have good muscle tone feel firm and plump and wiggle vigorously when they handle so it's a indication of uh, good condition then hell most of the time crying also when they are specially hungry or feel cold 
excessive or prolonged crying it is like in the humans also it's a sign of a problem uh, then they spread most of the time in sleeping almost they sleep about 14 to 16 hours and when they are awake so they are nursing means they are taking the uh, milk then uh, healthy kitten should show normal weight gain and uh, they should gain equivalent to the birth weight each week for the first two to three weeks then then <coughs> so this after finishing this cat part we will take later a short break so after 12 week of age means uh, this kitten once they attain the 12 week of age male growth uh, start male starts to grow faster uh, as in comparison with the females at from the 12 weeks of age means after four months first week they spend four hours or more per day for suckling uh divided into short period again and again they will uh, suckle and uh, if we count complete period in a day then it may la it may take 4 hours or it may spend 4 hours just for this suckling it gradually decreases it may gradually from 4 to 3 then 2 with the passing of time the mother cat gives a characteristic murmur cry to initiate suckling there is a special characteristic um queen will initiate a particular sound to uh, initiate this suckling and she adopts a body posture that makes nipple easily accessible to kittens both the mother and the kitten usually purr continuously while nursing and uh, kitten show treading movement means kneading and when their paws held against their mother's abdomen it facilitates the milk ejection so both uh, this mother as well as the pups uh, sorry uh, the kitten they assume they are in the position so that the ejection of milk and the nursing of milk taking of milk it should become easy for both of them so they uh, so they sit in that particular position only then now what uh, different things are there in cat's milk rodinella is 7 to 8% lactose is 3 to 4% fat is 5 to 7% calcium is 700 to 18000 1800 mg per liter magnesium is 65 to 70 iron is 8 to 9 zinc is 6 to 7 copper is 1 and energy about 850 to 1600 kilo calorie per liter then if uh, then if after uh, for sometimes death of queen may happen then how to rear this orphan cat okay uh, temporary care requires if the dam is ill or uh, has died in cesarean section uh, in some cases like death of mother yes this needs uh, kitten uh, this needs care as uh, as the kittens of normal uh, parturition so most important care is ad- adequate and ambient environment should be given sleeping area should be slightly warmer than the body temperature of cat since orphans did not receive colostrum or uh, as mother is not there so uh, care must be taken to minimize exposure because from the colostrum only they will take enough amount of uh, enough uh, immunity will transfer to the kittens but uh, if uh, death of mother is there then colostrum won't be available and uh, they are at risk of pathogen uh, development of this pathogenesis orphans can be fed using either a commercial kitten formula or homemade formula of this matter in few days kitten should be fed every 2 to 3 hours then um, later on after 4 to 5 hours and up later on four times a day i dropper can be used to feed uh, the food Uh, to newborn kittens and then during the first 5 to 6 days orphan kitten should be weighed daily uh, to monitor this health as uh, indication as gaining the weight is the uh, ideal parameter for measuring the growth it is the uh, <clears throat> for the first two weeks of life kitten must also be stimulated to urinate and defecate by stroking the belly uh, then <clears throat> at three weeks kitten can be introduced to semi solid feed so after three weeks they can be introduced to semi solid feed and later on they gradually wean 
okay just as if the mother were present like uh, the care has to be taken in the same way as uh, uh, as in the normal persuasion we take so we have to take the same uh, type of care okay so the next we have just finished this cat uh, dogs and cat and then now uh, the uh, important part is finished but uh, some information is there about pet birds also so we'll take uh, this after few minutes break and later on again we'll resume our uh, resume of class and we'll start this management of pet birds you also take break we'll return after uh, this short break
<clears throat> so uh, after this break we are again uh, we are back and uh, now we'll finish this part the last part that is the pet birds and common pet birds in india used are parakeets myna um, manigans pigeons crows and quails okay parakeets uh, this term parakeets generally applies to the long tail slender uh, birds which belongs to the cetacea family and in india there is no parrot uh, but only parrot like birds and those are called the parakeets common parakeets are uh, the bajarias and uh, Melocytacus undulatus uh, or uh, Cetacula crameri are some of its uh, uh, scientific names. Uh, this first one is for the rose uh, ring the parakeet, and the next one is the blossom. Means some these are some of the types of parakeets. There are also a few more types like the blue winged parakeet, bamboo, par uh, which is also called as bamboo uh, parakeet or malbar parakeet. Parakeets, if acquired, uh, the young can learn to talk quite well and uh, like parrots in India, not parrots, par parrots like birds are there. Those are called parakeets. And that's why if uh, acquired, uh, they can learn to talk quite well and they will develop elaborate the vocabulary. In movies and all, you must have seen uh, talking uh, and uh, producing various type of signs by these parakeets. Uh, in training a young bird to talk, it is best to keep it out of hearing distance of other birds. Uh, how to uh, teach the dog, uh, teach the bird to talk? So first of all, it has to be kept away from hearing of the other birds. Otherwise, uh, they, it will mimic the sound of the other birds. Okay, uh, and repeat patiently, repeat over and over. The word has to be taught so that again and again that bombarding of that particular word should happen over its mind and uh, later on it will produce the same sound. It's best way to speak more slowly than normal, slowly, because they will uh, won't, they won't understand speed as uh, uh, we used to talk in a speedy manner. So if, but if we want to talk the, if we want to teach uh, the speaking, uh, uh, the speaking skill to the birds then we have to talk in a slow and normal tone then there is no sex difference in the abilities of birds to mimic birds both of the uh, male and female they can uh, talk in the same way the genus cetacula is made up of larger parakeets mostly the larger uh, parakeets they are in, uh, under the cetacula genus okay uh, uh, the, uh, all these parakeets are <clears throat> Like the uh, hair, common names and their uh, uh, scientific name is mentioned. So, budger ears, rose ring parakeet, blossom headed parakeet, or parakeet or plum head parakeet, blue wind parakeet, bamboo parakeet, or malbar parakeet. So, the different para different type of parakeets are there to whom we can teach the. Uh, uh, they have the ability to talk and uh, in the same way we can teach them to talk by speaking in a slow and normal way. Now the next one is the Mina. Uh, spelling is Mina like E-M-Y-N-A-H. So there are two main Minas. First one is the Hill, hill Mina and the other one is the Common Mina. So uh, scientific name is Gracula religiosa for Hill Mina and uh, Acridotherus tristes for Common Mina. The Mena word is a native to Asia and India and the primarily it is black in color. There is a white patch on its wings. Now we are uh, learning some of the characteristic uh, physical appearances. So there is a white patch on its wings. Bill is orange. Or a bare yellow skin patch. It will extend from below the eye toward the nape of neck. Its legs are yellow and feeds primarily on the fruits. Mina bird noted uh, for its ability to mimic the human voice also. And mina sex is uh, immaterial and regard to its power of mimicking. Uh, so this desire can draw, uh, uh, is driven by the power of mimicking only. And keeping mina birds can be more time consuming than keeping the other type of birds because of their type. Okay? Then they consume fruits uh, and 
that's why their cage needs to be cleaned at least once a day they will keep their fruits their main food is fruits and they will they uh, uh, feed on fruits and uh, that will become dirty that's why cleaning of that cage regularly is necessary so whatever clinical uh, this whatever physical appearance so characteristics we have seen that will reflect in this one feature this is the hill mena and its scientific name is gracula religiosa then the next important is the common mena also called as indian mena acridothera species it is scientific name mena uh, it's some member of family the family of mena is sternidae so don't forget this name this is the sternidae sternidae okay and it is native to asia this is an omnivorous open woodland bird with a strong territorial instinct okay mena has been introduced in many other parts of the world and uh, its distribution range is on uh, increasing level uh, but in australia there is a threat to the ecosystems of this bird uh, common mena uh, is an important motif in indian indian culture and uh, it it's uh mentioned it has been mentioned in the literature also okay but particularly in the sanskrit literature common mena is uh, now uh, its scientific uh, sorry its physical characteristics we are seeing here common mena is really readily identified by the brown body black head bare yellow patch behind the eye brown body black hooded head and bare yellow patch behind the eye bill and legs light yellow there is white patch on the outer primaries and the wing lining on the underside is white sexes are similar and the birds are usually seen in the pairs okay this is the uh, common mena here you can see bill and the area around eye it's a yellow color overall body is brownish color and the area of neck it's a black in color then the next one is mannequins or nuns or munias or munias these are uh, different species like black headed munia uh, which are common which are also called as longcura melaka a white black munia munia or longcia strata which is spotted uh, um, sorry black headed munia is longcia uh, melaka white headed munia is a longcura strata and spotted munia is a longcura punctuata punctuata these things are not so important uh, not important at all from the uh, from our exam point of view but there could be one special feature it may hidden inside uh, my talking so you focus on that one and that particular point may come in that case other people they won't be knowing but you people can uh, solve that particular question so pay attention questions can be asked from any type and uh, from this birds part also single one to two questions if they ask then uh, it's easy for you to uh, answer that question so uh, you focus on uh, particular points like what three types first one is the black headed second one is the white headed black uh, uh, white back and third one is the spotted okay they are resident breeding birds in africa so, and africa in south asia from india and sri lanka also east to indonesia and the philippines okay the name mannequin uh, actually it is from the uh, dutch culture and it means the little man okay uh, <clears throat> some of the longcura species or some of the mannequin species were formerly placed in spermestis others have been placed in genus of the bone okay forget it now commonly used uh, genus is the longcura okay then the next one is pigeons okay pigeons and doves these group of birds uh, actually they are classified under family columbiaidae and columbia livia is its uh, scientific name uh, pigeon means commonly a kabutar uh, in our uh, marathi language or hindi language it is called kabutar pigeons and dove actually they have a uniform appearance and uh, dove tends to be reserved for smaller birds and generally smaller birds are called uh, those and larger birds they are called pigeons most species they 
feed on seeds or the fruits okay then blue rock pigeon called columbia livia and spotted dove it is called strepto spotted dove is called streptopelia chinensis okay and even there are fancy pigeons also which can be which we can see in market or uh, uh, in the shows then the next one is quail okay quail and its scientific name here is okay it's little bit difficult to pronounce its scientific name is Eudynamis polopecia. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> actually, uh, they are the genus of cuckoos from Asia, Australia, and the Pacific. They are large, sexually dimorphic cuckoos, which eat fruits. Uh, they can also eat insects. Okay. Uh, in New Zealand, uh, there is a long-tailed quail, and it is called a long-tailed long cuckoo also. <clears throat> Two other, like one is the dark quail, that is called a white crowned quail. <clears throat> male is black all black and uh, they are about <coughs> same size the uh, same size but comparatively slim than the crows male's loud sound is monotonous called co 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 like the, those sounds we have heard many times because quails uh, <clears throat> naturally they are found in india also and females have some metallic clicking call uh, clicking sounds then the next is the Lovers, the genus group Agapornis. Okay, they are referred to as lovers and are native to the Africa. There are nine species of these lovers, uh, but three are uh, very common. Uh, they are also very hardy and long-lived birds, uh, and uh, these are excellent pets and uh, tame readily if obtained at a younger age. And older birds they become aggressive. Determining the sex of lovers is a very difficult task. Then common pet birds which we use are the like finches, parrots, lovers, pigeons, doves, vendors, and other calls like the pigeons and quails. Now, what problems could happen in these birds? It could be there could be uh, feather mutilation, uh, self mutilation of feathers, or this is the common problem in the same cage, uh, and uh, especially in the cetacean birds, this problem is more. Skin irritation will happen and uh, disturbance may cause self-mutilation and plucking of feathers. It will uh, either because of boredom happen, boring uh, things have boring happening or uh, dietary deficiency or psychosis or bacterial uh, infection or virus or fungi, parasite, lack of sleep due to household lights or uh, contact, uh, contact with strangers, dogs or cat means many things even change in single factor even uh, that will easily disturb the uh, pet birds okay and they will cause the self mutilation of feathers then chewing and self mutilation of feathers must be it must be dis distinguished from the feather sheath removal they will remove sometimes sheath of the feathers and uh, they will also do this, do this self mutilation of feathers so it has to be differentiated it has to be distinguished chewed feathers show the ramus of feathers split actually they will split this feather then mutilated feathers they are confined to <coughs> areas where bird can chew <coughs> then birds with psychologically uh, disturbed they will exhibit the absence of the form discolor and feathers when keeping immature canvas of about one month of age, sometimes take on others. Uh, therapy, what therapy should be there? There is a separation of authentic birds. If they keep together, then they will uh, break each other. That's why there should be separation of birds. If uh, bacterial cause is there, viral cause is there, if any wound is there, so first of all, remove the primary cause or uh, remove that uh, blood stained area and uh, deep picking is the best method to prevent this. Then the next disease is gang gang syndrome and uh, gang gang syndrome actually uh, this is also uh, <clears throat> often feeder pluckers in captivity which are kept in a, a particular uh, this <coughs> cage. There is a fresh supply of poor foliage such as large casorins or <clears throat> branches laden with nuts 
together with fruit and vegetables as well as a normal signature okay but if they completely keep on this foliage then there is a problem and uh, that is called this is a one of the frustration induced species and called commonly the back gang gang syndrome then the next is the dermatitis stress so, dermatitis as i said uh, many small and uh, little things they will disturb them and this condition ulcerative dermatitis caused by self inflation occurs in the lower shoulder region and uh, patagal membrane parts uh, leave it shoulder region they are usually affected in the birds of any age or sex love bird is a colony bird uh, actually very spiteful and bully and they are probably more prone for this psychological insult हेलो 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 सर कैन यू हियर मी एंड कैन यू सी माय स्लाइड्स सर स्लाइड दिसत नाही दिसत नाही का ओके सर नेटवर्क इशू असेल जस्ट मी सर आवाज आता येतो दोन मिनिटा पूर्वी येत नव्हता सर असा ओके 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 जस्ट मी
हेलो 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 हाँ सर हाँ सर नेटवर्क इशू का होता एक्चुअली क्लाइमेट मु सर पर प्लीज लेट मी आलो माई स्क्रीन शेयरिंग का मैं कार्तिक सर बोला लगे तुम्हें डायरेक्टली बोला जस्ट छोटा सा पार्ट रहा है हाँ सलाह करते फोन से हाँ ओके सर ओके ओके सर नाउ स्लाइड्स आर विजिबल एंड माय वॉइस इज ऑडियो राइट एनी वन फ्रॉम पार्टिसिपेंट आल्सो कैन रिस्पॉन्ड नो प्रॉब्लम हेलो यू कैन टाइप इन चैट बॉक्स ऑल्सो हेलो सर हाँ सर ओके 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 सो द नेक्स्ट डिस इज द स्प्रेस डर्मेटाइटिस सो दिस कंडीशन इज एन अल्सरेटिव डर्मेटाइटिस नॉट जस्ट डर्मेटाइटिस बट द अल्सरेटिव डर्मेटाइटिस एंड कॉज बाय सेल्फ म्यूटिलेशन ऑफ पर्टिकुलरली द फेदर्स एंड द स्किन इट्स नॉट रिलेटेड विद द सेक्स और एज इट हैपेंस इन द एनी टाइम ऑफ लाइफ और इन द एनी टाइप ऑफ सेक्स मीन्स एनी जेंडर एंड लव बर्ड इट्स अ कॉमनली spiteful bird so it's easy for uh, easy it can go under uh, go, go under psychological insult a uh, secondary bacterial infection may happen with this staple of the species so treatment now uh, what treatment we can give uh, we can give mixture of 1.5 ml of lecithin or even 100 mg per ml of injection with 0.45 ml dexamethasone or 2 mg per ml uh, dexamethasone 2 ml per uh, 2 mg per ml injection and uh, also 0.05 ml dms means dimethyl sulfoxide used alone or in equal combination with vitamin a and vitamin e as vitamin a plays a role in the epithelialization and uh formation of hairs again over that exposed area not just vitamin a and vitamin e also plays as antioxidant uh, role and uh, will provide the cover or will protect the tissues or skin from the uh, external damage then ectoparasites in ectoparasites particularly mite uh, that is called sternostoma tracheostoma or uh, <coughs> nemidocoptic species or ticks or the other lice or the mycotic diseases like the aspergillosis like the candidiasis even the gizzard malfunction syndrome or, or gizzard malfunction syndrome these all can uh, affect the uh, birds then in viral diseases uh, herpes virus infection which is called a pachecos disease these these focus on such points like herpes virus disease is named a special name is there that is pachecos disease so you remember this name then the other diseases like in newcastle disease and in protozoal diseases chlamydiasis and trichomonas disease can also occur so how to treat it 
we have to treat it with the wide uh, range of antibiotics we can treat uh, but the roots may vary they can be given uh, at different doses uh, by different roots particularly i am oral subcut or iv okay what different antibiotics we can use like amikacin like amoxicillin amphotericin b neomycin thiostepton uh, this ampicillin again benzathin penicillin or cefotaxin or cefalexin or clotetracycline or cloxacillin so sulfonamide derivatives along with uh, or potentiated sulfonamides uh, or doxycycline erythromycin gentamicin griseofulvin canamycin lincomycin nistatin uh, oxytetracycline streptomycin sulf uh, this uh, tylosin these different uh, uh, wide range of antibiotics they can be used to treat the birds against various number of viral diseases and bacterial diseases as well uh, in the parasitic diseases also oxytetracycline and all oxytetracycline and tetracycline can be used and in case of bacterial diseases these antibiotics can be used also in case of viral diseases they will uh, avoid the secondary bacterial infection so here uh, thank you so much for your kind attention today we have finished this uh, <clears throat> today we have finished this uh, uh, pet medicine part although it all it's not so important but uh, uh, it depends on examiner few points uh, they may ask few uh, questions from this uh, part also so uh, uh, here we have completed today the dog part uh, particularly uh, we have taken majorly the dogs focus later on the, on cats and uh, also we have covered few major and important part, points from the birds also in birds we have covered their habits for uh, and their uh, this uh, habitat uh, what different type of foods uh, they will eat uh, what different type of sounds they produce if you want to teach them what methods we can employ and uh, what diseases can occur in uh, birds like uh, bacterial diseases viral diseases and how to treat them and special names also like gangrene syndrome or pachecos disease so all these we have covered later on also whenever you have a time you go through this uh, slide or go through this recording and uh, you uh, note down the peculiar features for this dog cat and uh, birds why i am telling this because they are not particularly we are not so familiar about this portion of medicine and upcoming two portions that is uh, wildlife medicine and the ethics and jurisprudence so you have to Uh, read it again and again, and only few points are there to remember. And uh, if you read it again, then you will uh, uh, you can fix it uh, inside your mind and can easily remember if anything can anything asked from this part of the medicine course. So here we have completed the pet medicine course. And if you have any doubt, you can ask here only. Let me tell you. Uh, to answer for this two doubts yesterday on uh, the cofal test uh, that is uh, used in the avian uh, leucosis and uh, stand stands for coffl stands for the complement fixation test for avian leucosis and the another uh, question asked about the sabin pilman test so this is the test used for diagnosis of the toxoplasma gondii uh, infection if you have any doubts today you can uh, ask me otherwise <clears throat> otherwise we can stop here uh, our time has also uh, ended now it's 2201 okay so if you don't have any doubt uh, no issue uh, if you still have you can ask me tomorrow or later on we'll try to finish this uh, medicine within next two days so one day we'll take uh, wildlife medicine and one day we'll uh, take this animal ethics animal welfare laws and acts it's a so short a part if time permits we will uh, i have not prepared this clear slide set so even i don't know how what exact time it will take but uh, uh, that's not a major uh, issue we'll try to finish it but if time doesn't permit us then uh, we'll also take one Uh, extra lecture on saturday that i will let you know on the friday night or we can rest our classes on on friday night only so here uh, congratulations all 
that we have again we have covered today one more part uh, and uh, tomorrow and there after tomorrow uh, we'll uh, complete uh, one by one fourth and fifth part of this medicine so uh, here we'll stop for today and uh, tomorrow at the same time at the same place we'll meet again bye <clears throat> bye and good night